We've already covered the capturing part of photogrammetry on this channel, and now I think it's time to also cover the part that comes after that, converting the high density mesh into something that can easily be used in a 3D scene. So in this video, we'll go through this whole process, creating a low res mesh, clean UVs, and all necessary maps like normal, displacement, and diffuse. It might sound scary, but the process is quite simple. Let's start. There's a ton of different ways to approach this, but after countless tests, I've settled on a workflow that fits my needs and also delivers good looking results. But that doesn't mean that you have to follow this to the letter. If you don't like a specific part in the workflow, you can easily replace it with something that feels more comfortable to you. I use three programs for my captures. The desktop version of PhotoCatch for the capturing part, Cinema 4D for the UVs and final setup, and ZBrush for retopologizing the mesh and creating all the necessary maps. One quick note before we dive into the retopo and map generation process. When creating the 3D model in PhotoCatch, use the raw option. This gives us the highest quality mesh. Any other option will result in a mesh that is not as detailed. It's still going to have a lot of detail, but it's not the maximum we can get. The one downside with the raw option is that we only get the diffuse map. All other options automatically generate a normal and roughness map, but from my tests I found out that it's better to generate these maps yourself. Now, with that out of the way, let's go through this sequence of events. First of course is the capturing process. As I've already mentioned, this happens in PhotoCatch, but you can use many other programs like Metashape or Meshroom. Then it's creating a low res mesh out of the high density one. For me, this happens with the automated retopologizing tools of ZBrush. That result is then brought into Cinema to generate the UVs. And finally, we bring that result back to ZBrush to generate all the necessary maps like normal, displacement, and diffuse. We could use Cinema 4D throughout all these steps, but after a lot of testing, I've noticed that ZBrush gave the best results, not only in the retopo process, but also in the map creation process. As quirky as ZBrush might be, it's a really battle-tested product, so the results we can get out of it are pretty much flawless. So let's start with the first step. Here's our scanned object. It's more than 2 million polygons. And if we enable polyframes, you can see how dense the mesh is. To reduce the number of polygons, we'll use ZBrush's remeshing tools. The results we can get out of Z-Remesh are insanely good, especially considering how automated and fast the process is. All the magic happens in this Z-Remesh dropdown. There's a lot of different options to play with, but the main ones we need is the target polygon count and the curve strength slider. By the way, if you're not sure about a specific option, you can hover over a command and hold down the control key. This gives us a quick description of what the command does and how to use it. It's very handy and personally I use it all the time. It won't be available in all commands, but most of them will have it. So let's say that we need the final mesh to be around 2000 polygons. We can move the slider to that amount and then hit the Z remesh button. <laughs> and that's it, I'm not kidding, it's that simple. ZBrush will do its thing, and after a few seconds, it will return a mesh that matches the original. Keep in mind that ZBrush prioritizes form over polygon count, so the polygon count we entered is mostly a suggestion, it's not going to be exactly 2K, but that's perfectly fine because no matter what, we know that the final result will always resemble the original. There's one more step we need to take care of, but before we do that, let's export the mesh and inspect it inside Cinema. This is the point where we would start preparing the UVs, but we have one issue we need to solve. Let's say that we want to separate the bottom from the rest of the object. The way the mesh is constructed makes things a bit challenging. We cannot find a good enough loop to use, but we can easily fix that if we adjust one setting in ZBrush. This is where the curve strength slider comes into play. We can draw guides that will let ZBrush know what kind of mesh flow we want, and with a curve strength slider, we let ZBrush know that it needs to more closely follow that guide. To draw the guide, we're going to use a brush. It's called Z Remesh Guides, and we can quickly access it by pressing B to bring up the brush's pop-up, then Z to further filter down the results, and finally R. And now we can start drawing the polygon flow we want. We only need one guide, and we're going to draw it at the bottom of the bread. Now in order for ZBrush to closely follow that guide, we need to go to the curve strength slider, 
and turn it all the way to 100. A strength of 50 will use the loop we've drawn as a general suggestion, but a strength of 100 will try to follow it as closely as possible. Let's hit the Z Remesh button, and after some processing we have the result we want. If we enable polyframes, we can see that ZBrush even created two polygroups. So now if we import that into Cinema, we have a clean loop we can use for our UVs. We can hit Unwrap, and our clean UVs are done. We can also use the UV Packing command to ensure that both UV islands have a big enough size. This is calculated based on how big that element of the object is. With our low res mesh and UVs ready, all that's left is generating all maps, normal, displacement, diffuse, etc. We'll do that in ZBrush, so let's load in our low res mesh and get to work. If we don't have to generate a diffuse map, the whole process is super fast. If we do need a diffuse map, it's going to take a little bit more time, but it's nothing too complex. More on that later on. Let's first go through the process of how these maps are produced. ZBrush needs a high res mesh in order to produce all necessary maps, but currently we have things in pieces. We have a high res mesh with a mesh topology and UVs, and a low res mesh that has the topology and UVs we want, but not enough information. So we need to somehow combine the two, and we're going to do that by projecting the high res mesh onto the low resolution mesh. But before we do that, we need to ensure that both objects have similar poly counts. Otherwise, the projection is not going to give us any usable results. The high res mesh has 2.4 million polygons, so we'll subdivide the low res one until we get a similar poly count. I'll hit Ctrl D a couple of times, and it looks like the subdivision that will get us closer to the original mesh's poly count is 4.4 million polygons. The subdivision right before this one will give us 1.1 million, so that means we will lose quite a bit of detail. That's why we're going one step higher. At this point, we could go through the map creation process and we would get all maps except for the diffuse map. We need to do a couple more things before we can export that, but for now, let's go through the process for all other maps. With the now subdivided low res mesh selected, we're gonna go into the subtool dropdown and add the high res mesh onto the low res one. We do that by clicking the append button. The mesh is now added as a subtool. We'll now go to the project dropdown and click project all. If the low res form doesn't follow the high res form that closely, the projection could introduce some artifacts. So I usually turn this slider all the way to one. Usually that happens when we go really low on the poly count. In this case, it's not needed, but let's turn it to 1. It won't make a difference. Let's click on Project All, and now ZBrush will do its thing and project all the high-res details onto the low-res mesh. Perfect, we now have an object that has clean UVs, a low-res mesh, and all the detail of the high-res object. We no longer need the high-res subtool, so we can go ahead and delete it. The projection worked flawlessly, and now we're ready to create our maps. We'll need the multi-map exporter, which can be found in the plugins menu. I export displacement, normal, diffuse, ambient occlusion, and cavity maps. I don't really use the AO and uh, cavity maps, but since they're there, we might as well export them. They don't take that long to produce, so if at some point they're needed, we have them. We won't go into each option of the exporting dialog, but it's good to know the best settings. So instead of spending hours and hours finding out which options give you the best results, here's the ones I use. Now that everything's set up, we just click on export maps and let ZBrush do its thing. With the maps ready, we just have to go to cinema and set everything up. As I said, I'm only using the normal and displacement maps, so the setup process doesn't really take that long. And just like that, we have a low res mesh with all the detail of the original scan. Perfect, now let's go back and see what we need to get the diffuse map. The way we have to load the texture in ZBrush is through polypaint. Polypaint is mesh dependent, so if we use a low res mesh and attach the texture to it, the exported diffuse map will be low resolution as well. So, what we need to do in this case is subdivide the mesh as much as possible. ZBrush documentation goes into detail about that, but as Pixelogic also says in its documentation, if you can't be bothered with math, just subdivide the mesh as far as you can. 
To get a high resolution 8K map, we need a relatively dense mesh, but don't go crazy because the baking and projection process could take a long time. The procedure for exporting the diffuse map is the same as before with one exception. Before adding the high res mesh as a subtool, we need to add the scanned texture to it. Let's do that. In this case, the scan divided the object into three parts, so we need to bring them in one by one. With the first part loaded, we'll go into this texture area and load up the texture for that part. We need to flip it vertically beforehand because ZBrush has a different axis system. With the texture selected and the mRGB channel enabled, we'll go into the polypaint dropdown and click on the polypaint from texture option. As you can see, the texture is now applied. In this case, we need to repeat the process two more times since the object is split into three parts. Once we have all objects and textures applied, we need to add these three pieces as subtools of the low res mesh. Like before, we need to subdivide the low res mesh to a big enough poly count, and then we can add these subtools. Now we just click on the project button, and ZBrush will ask us if we want to transfer the polypaint data, which we want, and then we just wait. Our low res mesh now has the diffuse map attached, and the next step is exporting the different maps. Once we do that, we have all the maps we need, normal, displacement, and diffuse. And that's it. Once you go through the process a couple of times, you realize it's much easier than it looks. Now, if you've stayed this long in the video, first off, congrats, you're one of the few dedicated viewers. So as a reward, here's a small announcement. I'm preparing a collection of objects and this bread object I've been using is one of them. The collection is going to be around food because it's one of the more challenging areas when it comes to modeling. Scanning is a time consuming process so I don't have a definite release date yet, but it's going to be sooner rather than later. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, that's about it for this uh, video. I hope you find it useful, and if there's something that's not clear, let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.